Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Rank Roulette series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we are here again today, continuing on with this team that the Roulette wheel churned out for us in yesterday's episode, kicking us off the week with this fresh brand new team and what has happened yesterday. If you haven't seen yesterday's episode yet, do go back up here, I'll link a card for you, check out yesterday's episode and then come back into today's episode because the unbelievable happened in yesterday's episode we're off to a phenomenal start this week which is i don't think happened yet on this series we're two zero at the minute and uh, things are looking up i'm feeling confident the team is great everything's performing really well we haven't mm, featured the sheninja or the zekrom yet but there is plenty of time this week to feature these pokemon it's a really w weird looking bunch of pokemon but there's they seem to be doing a really good job so far so i'm really hoping it continues on today remember we've got those four bonus buttons like we said in yesterday's episode that we can activate come tomorrow we've got a legend maker randomizer switch up and a patreon button that we can change things up if we want to come tomorrow and um, let me know if you'd like to just see us continue but like i said in our last episode what i'm going to do is just see how the team gets on we might not need to activate any buttons they're there to help us out which sometimes they don't sometimes they do um but if we don't need the help then why change something if it's not broken that's that's the thing isn't it anyway enough yammering from myself let's get into some battles that's why you're here you're here to see this amazing team perform well and uh, hopefully we're creeping more towards we are we're getting closer to that 1500 mark so that's a, a good sign uh, we're on the road to viridian city uh, like that great pokemon song goes um i'm not gonna go on across my version two let's go aether foundation we've got cause from italy up as our first opponent and we'll hop straight into team preview so guys, coming at us today is our first opponent running a team of Tapu Koko, Kyogre, Incineroar, Rayquaza, Karobat, and the Amoongus there. So a pretty standard Ray Ogre team. You've got the support options there from the Crobat. Works extremely well with that Rayquaza. Got access to Tailwind, uh, Haze, Super Fang, all the shenanigans, Taunt as well. And then the Tapu Koko there, also going to be a bit of a pain to deal with. Um, but does give Azekrom um, a really nice terrain to sit in and throw out some big damage as well you've got the intimidate support from the incineroar there with the fake out and then the amoongus there uh which is going to be like their trick room kind of check isn't it um now let's have a look at this what have they got for shininja if the ray goes down they've got incineroar uh, but then they need to make sure that the rain's not up so Shininja could be decent here. I don't know if I really want to bring it though, to be honest. Uh, I think Tailwind's a really good option for us. And uh, Murkrow's really nice at being able to shut down something like the Crobat. Um, Salamence, do I want to bring it here? Maybe not. Maybe we go Zekrom. Maybe we bring... Salamence in the back would be good, I think. I think Sogaleo's going to be really useful here. And I think... Uh, Salamence as well. Yeah, I think these four I'm pretty happy with. And going down a Tailwind route of our own, we've got Torn support from the Murkrow as well to help shut down some of their strategies and Intimidate is good. To nerf the requires there as well, whatever kind of variant it is. And if it is an Assault Vest, we've got Giga Impact to smash it with. If it's not, then we've got Hyper Beam to smash it with. So we've got lots of ways to deal with that requires or whatever goz decides to throw at us but good luck goz and um looking forward to getting into this one hopefully we can have a good result against this team today leading off with that zek one we haven't featured yet so it's going to be interesting to see how this kind of comes out and uh obviously a fantastic lead for us to kick off <laughs> kick off with today we've got the the kyoga and we've got the crawback coming out for my opponent um yeah i mean like zekrom's in a, a really nice position we can taunt the opposing crawbat if you want we can match tailwinds Um, it might be nice to taunt the crawbat first and just go for an attack into the kyoga um and i think that's what i kind of would prefer to do like taunt crawbat stop their tailwind next turn we can get our own tailwind up the kyoga's going to feel pretty pressured anyway so we'll go for the fusion ball into it i'm running a, a special um zekrom not physical one so we're not as uh, conflicted by the intimidate abuse that you constantly see in this format and it also gives us access to earth power which i thought was quite a nice option to have here uh, considering how weak i i really felt against something like um primal groudon anyway so uh opted for that we're gonna see a uh, taunt come out from the crowbat but shut down by our taunt we'll get this fusion bolt off which is a nice, lovely animation here. It's great animation, actually. Do some alright damage into the Incineroar. Like I say, what we can do now is 
uh, just go for a Tailwind of our own, and I think, um, do we go Fusion Bolt into the Crobat? Yeah, I'm going to do that, because I feel like you might want to fake out the Murkrow to stop the potential Tailwind. If they do that, then they get punished. We're not going to see any fake out at all from the Incineroar, which is good, because it means we are going to get an attack off into this this Crobat this turn. We're going to see a Super Fang that is going to be into the Murkrow, which I don't mind. kind of prefer that over our Zekrom, and we'll get this nice tasty Fusion Bolt off after our Tailwind. We should be able to shut down uh, their Tailwind speed control options anyway, as we see the Incineroar is now going to go for U-turn. It's going to go back, and uh, we might see the Rayquaza making its first appearance of this match, which I don't mind really at all, because one thing we could do next turn, if it is the Ray coming in, we could possibly Draco Meteor it. And, um, and go for a foul play into the Crobat. Now the Crobat should be in foul play range now from Murkrow. You've got to think it probably is. That's Kyogre. Okay. Kyogre's definitely going to protect, right? It has to protect. I think one of the things my opponent could potentially do here is is um, switch that Crobat out. I'm going to... I'm maybe going to switch Murkrow. Do I switch Murkrow out? Do I keep it in? And just foul play. It's just I feel like the Incineroar comes in on that Crobat slot. Um, I'm going to switch in Sogaleo here. And I'm going to go for the Fusion Bolt. I'm going to cover the Kyogre because I don't want to take a Water Spout onto Sogaleo. If that is the case. Uh, but I do feel like the Crobat switches out here. We could get Punish. We could see a uh, Super Fang from this Crobat into something. But yeah, it's more likely to see the Kyogre protect the Incineroar come in. It's wasting our Tailwind turns. But at least this way with Sogaleo out in the field, we kind of limit my opponent's uh, options going into this next turn like they really want to fake out uh, the Zekrom but if they do that they're allowing the Sogaleo a bit of freedom which can we can take down that uh, Incineroar with a superpower. Um, or we could Sunsteel Strike. I'm gonna get rid of the Incineroar that's the one thing that I'm not really enjoying right now. Um, it does leave the Kyogre kind of free to get an attack off which could punish us. We could Wide Guard as well just to get around but are they going to go for the water spout? Or are they going to go for an ice beam? There's the fake out. Yeah. Uh, we'll get the superpower off, which is fine. So we'll get rid of this Incineroar. The problem is now, I think, if we don't lose anything, the Crawback gets a free switch in and it does get access to throwing up another Tailwind. Just going to say an Origin Pulse. So we could have wide guarded here instead of getting rid of the Incineroar, which might have been a better idea. Man, critical hit on Sogaleo. Not really enjoying that too much, to be honest, but I mean, there's not really much we can do about it. We just gotta carry on. Um, and I, I'd say Crawback comes back in now. But we should still have one turn of Tailwind left. That's Ray Quiser. Okay. Ray Ray. Alright. The Bandit. And we still got t Tailwind up. Yeah, we still got a Tailwind up. Um, we still got Salamence in the back as well, which is fine. Um, do we just double the Rayquaza? I feel like the Kyogre protects here. I feel like they could both protect here, to be honest. I mean, we could double the Rayquaza. It could be a Soul Fest. Um, go for a Draco and a Sunsteel Strike into the Ray. We're leaving the Kyogre. Oh, okay. Okay, I mean... The Kyogre probably... Oh, there's no Protect there. Mm, this is not so good for us right now. Yeah, so it's a kind of a smart switch for my opponent. Um, they are... But we do get rid of their speed control, which is, like, a good thing. And we're going to get some damage onto this Kyogre. Oh, obviously, as well, Origin Pulse isn't the most accurate move, so it can miss. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's terrible. Yeah, terrible damage. Origin Pulse again. Mm, and now everything in extreme speed range. But, well, not Zekrom. And probably not Sogaleo. Well, Sogaleo's already procced its berry. Zekrom in now better shape, obviously, coming into this next turn. And we might be better off going for a play where we take advantage of the Murkrow now and use it like my opponents just used their Crobat to switch in. And use it as fodder so we reset the the drop on on zekrom to come back in now um and i think what i'll do is go for a wide guard 
um, and I will switch Zekrom out into Murkrow. Um, we'll see where the, the Rayquaza goes. It probably extreme speeds. What do you extreme speed? I think like you've, you've got to be worried a little bit about the Draco Meteor. Definitely from Zekrom. And we still have speed control with our Salamence, so losing Murkrow is not the worst thing in the world. So we'll see what uh, the Ray, Ray Ray coming out. Um, I don't know what it's going to do. Could Earth Power, it could be Soul Fest, but it'll give away probably what kind of build it is by the, the type of attack it goes for, unless it is just Dragon Ascent, which doesn't give us really any indications at all. Uh, we'll get the Wide Guard off with Sogaleo to block any of those. Ooh, Overheat. Wow, nice. Well, I don't mind that at all. It kind of indicates that it is a Soul Fest. Uh, rate. And if we do see an Origin Pulse here, that's ideal for us because it means Mirko gets in for free. It's a Life Orb. Wow, okay. Um, mysterious Winds really coming in clutch, but yeah, not quite enough to uh, allow our little Mirko to survive, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, okay, let's bring Salamance onto the field. I think we can clean this one up now, to be honest, because I think a Giga Impact would probably get the Rayquaza. And then a fusion bolt should be enough to get the Kyogre. Maybe. I think the thing that could go wrong for us is if we get the Ray with our Salamence. Um, and then the Kyogre kills our Zekrom. And then the next turn, because we've got to recharge, uh, the Kyogre could get our Salamence. That could be the worst case scenario. Um, let's go get Impact into Ray, and let's go for that Fusion Bolt into the Kyogre. We just gotta lock into it, let's see. I'm pretty, I feel confident that we can get both. Like Giga Impact will 100% uncategorically get the Rayquaza from this range. Um, and the Fusion Bolt probably won't get the Kyogre uh, because we're not the physical variant, but it should still do a decent amount. Um, and it depends who you target here. You could target the Salamence. Um, you could protect Ray and go for the Ice Beam into the Salamence, potentially, um, and try and snipe it that way. But you've got to be worried about the Zekrom, I think. I think that's the big thing here. Um, the Rayquaza is pretty weakened now as well. The minus two on its special side makes it a lot weaker after the overheat. And then, yeah, we'll get it. Oh, no! <laughs> we missed the Giga Impact! And I don't think the Fusion Mold's going to get. Oh. Giga Impact, what are you doing? <sighs> There's Ice Beam. It's actually at speed and we need Zekrom to hang on. Please survive, Zekrom. It's all went Pitong. And now we can't do anything because we've got these stupid recharge moves. That means that, yeah, whatever happens... Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing There's nothing we can do. We needed that to hit. And regardless if that had hit there, I think we lose anyway because it, that scenario would have happened. The Kyogre outsped our Zekrom, took us down, and the Kyogre would be able to snipe our Salamence the next turn. So regardless of what happened there, it doesn't really matter the RNG there. We would have lost this anyway. So um, probably the better thing to do, I think, there would have been protect Zekrom, go for the Giga Impact into the Ray. Hope it hits, hope we pick up the knockout. They tack into our Zekrom, sleep. Then the next turn, they can only take down. Yeah, I mean, we get the Kyogre, but there's no way we're gonna take a Dragon Ascent. Not now, uh, not two. Well, yeah, we're gonna take two and it's not gonna happen. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, that would have been the play to make, protecting Zekrom. And then it, it kind of splits the Kyogre's targets then, doesn't it? it can only Ice Beam either the Salamence who has to recharge or the Zekrom um, and then, then it's still tight because then it comes down to what how much Fusion Bolt does from that range and it's probably not enough to pick up the knockouts. So Kyogre was probably the target the whole time uh, over the, the Rayquaza there with the, the Giga Impact. And maybe that's why we got punished. So we're two wins, one loss. Not up to the best start today. I definitely feel like that was a match we could have won down to just some decision making. Maybe rushing in a bit too much, just quick, but then... Who knows? You know, it's difficult to say. My opponent could it, it made sense for my opponent to protect. Oh, what's this? Frank, but I think we've had, like, it came up, it flashed up like it, it was a, a disconnect. It was, so no Frank, unfortunately. Frank, what happened? Um, yes. Yeah, 
Oh, it's kicked us off completely. Well, it hasn't kicked us off completely, but it's kicked us off this temporarily a little bit. So we'll have to just hop back in. Um, yeah, it made sense to protect the Kyogre there and throw out an attack with Rayquaza potentially. It depends what the Rayquaza had, but you can see it from the other side as well. It's like the 50-50s there are just a bit... Uh, a bit awkward, but I still think we could have won that one. And uh, I'm not taking anything away from Gauze, of course, because uh, they played it well. And did what they needed to to eke out the victory. And like I say, it would have been, it would have been difficult even if we'd landed that uh, Giga Impact. And um, it's all, it would have all been about taking that Ice Beam from the Kyogre, but just too powerful and uh, Zekrom not strong enough, unfortunately. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. Uh, what I'm going to do, my friends, is just cut it here and we'll come right back when we find the next opponent of the episode. And we got our next opponent of the episode 1 from Japan. Uh, so we'll hop straight into Team Preview, see what we're going up against. Ooh, quite an interesting mix of Pokemon. We got Groudon and Dusk Min and Necrozma as the restricted combination. Here we got support and cast from Salamence, then Umbrian, not so much, not commonly seen at all. Then Kangaskhan and Tapulele. So potentially two megas here uh, between the Salamence and the the Kangaskhan. Uh, probably depending on what the team is that they're going to be playing, depending on what they bring here. I'd say more likely against us there. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Probably more likely to bring the Salamence against us. Although, it feels difficult for either Mega. And I think if you bring the, the Kangaskhan, it's a bit conflicting about bringing your Tapu Lele, but it's definitely going to be Ultra Necrozma. Uh, I think Murkrow again is going to be good just for that guaranteed Tailwind that we, we probably do want to rely on. Um, Murkrow Sogaleo is not bad. Um... Now, what else do we want? If we can get... Porygon Z is pretty good here. Um, but so is Shininja, actually. My opponent's got very little to hit Shininja with outside that Umbrian. Um, the Umbrian could be a bit difficult for us to actually deal with, to be honest. Um, let's go Porygon Z. And let's go for... Salamence or Zekrom? Salamence, probably. Yeah, because if we can get a Tailwind up, then... Giga Impact and Hyper Beam would be very good. Um, it'd be nice if we could take the reins of Salamence maybe for the rest of the week and give it like maybe Double Edge and Hyper Voice. Or just Giga Impact and Hyper. Just give it Hyper Voice and Giga Impact. That would be nice. At least we'd stick with one of them. Rather than having both. It's so conflicting. It is a very strong Mega Pokemon, but at the same time, it'll make it a bit difficult. So we're going to see Mecro and we're going to see uh, Sogaleo come out against Umbrian and. Uh, Necrozma, so we might. I'm definitely gonna get try and get our tailwind up now. I think we can definitely get that up. Gotta worry about snatch. There's one thing that springs to my mind from this umber and snatch umber and could be a thing. Steal our tailwind. Um, I'm gonna see an earth power potentially. I think of all things that you would throw, it would be a foul play and an earth power. I think. Um, Porygon Z could be good to get in here to get that Z move off. I'm gonna bring in, yeah, we're gonna see Necrozma switch out. Groudon hit the field, which isn't bad at all, you know, to be honest. I don't want to leave Sogaleo in here and take a foul play from the Umbrian. Um, and even if they do snatch, I think it's not the worst thing in the world because they'll get Tailwind up and then we can still get Tailwind up the next turn unless they keep snatching, which I hope they don't do. And they might not even have snatch. I'm just making, making theories up about what they could potentially do. It just make more sense for me why they would lead Umbrian. Unless they do suspect that we'd lead Sogaleo, which is a good call then, isn't it? We get a tailwind up, no snatch, so nothing to worry about there. Ah, oh, Snarl coming out, not what we want to see. Hmm, especially for our Porygon Z. Hmm. We could get Salamence onto the field now, I guess. It's not a bad play. Um, oh, we could Haze. We could Haze and then Z move. His and Z moves not a bad play, is it? Do we Z move the Groudon though, or do we Z move the Umbrian? The Umbrian's like the big pin in the backside, really, isn't it? Um, I kind of want to go for the Umbrian more than anything else, but I just don't feel like we're going to get the Umbrian. I'm going to go for the Groudon. I'm going to try and get it. Yeah, no protects coming out, so that's nice. We get the haze off, so we'll get rid of those snarl drops, um, and then yeah, Z move time. PZ, it is the ultimate Primal Groudon. 
Okay, like we got one yesterday with PZ, so uh, we're going to be able to get another one hopefully here today. Which will be good, and this kind of guarantees and solidifies and backs up that that the evidence that we are able to always get the, the primal ground on. I didn't do the calcs, I've got to admit, before putting this team together, so I don't know if it's always going to be something that we get, but looking at it, primal ground on, it's not even a problem. PZ is just the, the ultimate. <laughs> and there's another snarl coming out from the Umbrian trying that, but like like you say we've got the, we've got the haze so it really does help us there um with these snarl drops um, and Murkrow, thankfully a dog type as well not really taking too much damage from them so right tapu lele coming in can a hyper beam get a tapu lele i imagine hyper beam will probably be able to get a tapu lele uh, i definitely want to find out um so we'll we'll go for that we'll go for that haze and hyper beam See what PZ can do to Tapulele. I'm pretty sure we'll get the Tapulele. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it will. Tapulele is pretty, especially defensively bulky. So, um, but it'd be nice if we can get rid of it as well. Hyper Beam. <laughs> oh, I love Hyper Beam. I love all these big attacks. Man, PZ is crazy strong, isn't it? Why have I never used it before now? I should have listened to Lou a lot, <laughs> a lot sooner. And I can't remember off the top of my head who nominated Porygon Z, but what a great shout. It's putting in all the way. Can I get all four knockouts? That would be incredible if it can. Um, so we've got Umbrian, we've got the Dawn, uh, Duskman to come back in, of course. A bit tricky, but we've got we've got foul play. We can just launch onto the, uh, the Necrozma now. Uh, Porygon Z has to take a turn to recharge. Which is fine so we'll take this turn to recharge we might lose poor gunsy now uh, but the foul player should do a really nice chunk of damage to this this necrozma and i don't really see how the necrozma is able to all the umbrians able to deal with the murkrow to be honest it's like the one a, such a good support pokemon against this sort of team we do see the um, necrozma go for its ultra burst so ultra necrozma coming out to play foul players still do a, a really nice chunk of damage to this thing man oh there we go, Photon guys. It's going to be into the Polygon Z, but doing more than enough damage to uh, pick up the knockout there. And uh, we've still got Sogaleo, we've still got Salamence, and we've still got our Tailwind, and just another Snarl coming out from the Umbrian. But the thing is, we're going to be able to guarantee our, our Tailwind up again. Um, and I think I'm probably going to bring in Sogaleo over anything else, because I'll pre Oh, I haven't got Protect. Oh, that's the one thing that I was like. But we'll soften. The idea is to soften up the, the Umbrian. Uh, this this so when the Salamence comes in it can giga impact it and pick up the knockout because it's pretty defensive it's pretty bulky um do we actually need to go for the tailwind then if we're doing that i don't think we do i think we just file play the necrozma and we'll go for a sunsteel strike into the umbrian like sogaleo's gonna take Ooh, it's a helping hand helping hand earth power potentially okay yeah this probably will get us helping handed there's not really much we could have done there, but Merkrog going to be able to pick up the uh, the knockout here on two. And then a Chorosma. And what's going to be better to hit? Probably Giga Impact better to hit the Umbrian with, to be honest. If it's leftovers Umbrian, it could be tricky to deal with. We could have a bit of a stalemate going on here. Mm. But we will get Salamence in. It's going to be two against one. Salamence. Oh, come on. Come on. The internet is, oh, and it's ours. Oh, I'm so sad about that. Okay, let's hop on. Let's try and see if we can find. I'm going. I, I don't know if it's my internet. My internet has been terrible today. I will just say that. Um, yeah, I think it's my end. So we might have to call a day to it. I'm gonna say we would have been able to win that one. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna claim the victory, even though we we didn't really win. I'm gonna say we claimed it. Um, so we'll try. We'll see if we can get back on. If we can, then obviously I'm just checking on my phone to see if my because it's the best way for me to do it right now. I'm sitting in front of a computer. Why am I not doing it that way? Um, it might be something to do with the battle spot. You know, it's not the best. It looks like we're back on, so uh, we can we can hop back in and try and find another game because it's it's never great ending where we uh, and we're still well, 24 minutes, so we got we got time to have another game. Um, so we'll go championship battle. 
And we will see if we can find an opponent pretty quickly. That's it's devastating, isn't it? It's annoying when that happens. But um, we could write that game off completely or we could just claim the win. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. You guys let me know down in the comment section below what you would, what you would do, what you see as the right thing to do in that situation. I'm going to say, obviously, I'm biased, of course, that we'll take the win because we were two Pokemon to one. And even though the disconnect looked as though it was on our side, who knows if it was? It could have just been a glitch with the system. Everyone could have got booted off at the same time. Who knows? But we'll search for an another opponent. Um, and uh, like I said, to speed things up, we'll come straight back when I do bump into one. So hopefully it won't be too long. Next opponent of the episode, Swee. So uh, let's see what they've got and hop into team preview. Hopefully no more disconnections against Swee. So we've got the Xerneas, Incineroar, Amoongus, Landorus, Therian, Tapu Fini and Rayquaza. So our standard X-Ray call, we know what this team's capable of, what it can do. Uh, the one thing that this team really does lack is any sort of speed control because you, you're looking at there's no speed control options really outside of the Tapu Fini here. So uh, one of the things we can take advantage of against this team is our speed control options. Um, and I think Murkrow is a really nice option to bring because because it helps shut down things like Tapu Fini uh, if it does try to go for anything uh, like Heal Pulse or anything along those lines and it also helps us shut down the Amoongus with Taunt if that does become a thing um, and we've also got Haze there as well which is nice I'm gonna bring Sogaleo um, what else do we want to bring Porygon Z feels like it could be quite nice here um, and Salamence Salamence, yeah, because the Intimidate's always going to be useful, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll go with these four and lock in, and hopefully we don't have any connection issues, and this one's all nice and smooth for us to end on today. So we'll get straight into this one, see if we can do it. Um, I guess it's nice, you know, the, the one thing that we, like, I've been mentioning quite a lot throughout the series is we're, we're at the point of the series where... Most players have a really good team or have picked up a team that has been tested and tried throughout the season. So we're playing all these top tier teams with random teams, which does make it harder. Uh, but at the same time, it means that all the teams that we're generally playing are very established teams, which is a good test for our roulette teams to go up against at the same time. So we do have that going for us. Um, right. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to Tailwind and I'm going to go for Sunsteel Strike into... Yeah, I'm going to Tailwind, Sunsteel Strike into... I'll do a Superpower. Superpower could be good. Um, superpower, Superpower. Mm, no, I'm going to Sunsteel Strike. The Xerneas is too tempting to go for here. The only thing I would say Superpower would be good for here would be if that Incineroar Z move and it does decide to go... Uh, we see protect from the Xerneas and then um, CZ move from the Incineroar. But we're gonna we're just gonna see no fake outs come out here. We're gonna see just a straight up dazzling gleam. So maybe doubling into the Sogaleo here. Gonna, Merkel gonna be able to take it. Well, we should be able to get this Xerneas now with a Sunseal Strike from this range. Uh, depends how bulky the Xerneas is, of course, as well. Uh, they have been known to be able to take Sunseal Strikes, but. Not this one. We are going to be able to get rid of probably the biggest threat on the team, to be honest. Um, and it is the Z move from the the Incineroar. It will take down our Sogaleo, unfortunately. Um, but, I mean, trade for trade. You trade Sogaleo for Xerneas. I'm pretty happy doing that, to be honest. Uh, I guess the issue is now, when the Rayquaza does hit the field... Um, it is going to be able to pick off Murkrow with uh, an extreme speed, which isn't ideal, but it could be worse, couldn't it? Um, now, do we bring in Porygon Z? I think Porygon Z is a nice pick here because Murkrow is a nice switch to Salamence this next turn. And we can then cycle in Intimidate. We can utilize the Z move to get something. Maybe the Rayquaza. Um, oh, it's a Moongus. Oh. Why aren't we seeing that? So Ray in the back, the Ray has to be in the back, right? Um, and we can taunt the Amoongus. And we can go for that Z move. Uh, into... Into Incineroar. Yeah, we'll go for that. We'll get rid of the Incy. Incy. Incy Wincy Spider. Um, and then we got Salamence in the back. And you, you've got to think Salamence versus Ray and Amoongus. 
should be able to do it. It's not going to be like straightforward by any means. We get the taunt onto the moon, is that is going to be really helpful. Um, I think the biggest problem here would be Rage Powder, but we're not going to see that, so uh, we do get the tasty taunt into that Amoongus. Uh, no Rage Powder coming out. They're probably trying to spore us, I'd imagine. Um, but the Z-Move now should be able to get the Incineroar, I'm hoping. You've got to think, though, that Incineroar is bulky enough to take a Geomancy Moonblast from Xerneas, so potentially could take this attack. But is PZ stronger than a Xerneas? A Geomancy Xerneas? This is the question. It is! By a mile, it's the strongest Pokemon alive. Strongest Pokemon alive. It can't use Spore, so we do lock that down. And like I say, I would think the Rayquaza is the Pokemon to come in now. Hmm. Oh, it's the Finny. Even better. Even better. Okay, I really don't mind that at all. Um, because Salamence has a way easier time. Uh, we do have Thunderbolt as well on our Porygon Z, so we can fire that off into... Um, we just... Um, what are we doing with Murkrow? Um... Do we just taunt the Finny to prevent it doing any sort of support moves? It might be better just to do that um, and then go for a Thunderbolt into it as well. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll taunt it. I don't really want it being able to disrupt us. Like, it can fire off Icy Winds. It can fire off um, Nature's Madness. It can do what it likes. But, <sighs> like, a Hyper Beam will get that type of Finny now. That's the thing. Um, so, we are going to see an Icy Wind. Mercury should take this. Just about and what Team Moon is going to do. Like, Clear Smog might take down Mercrow, but then it will open the door for Salamence to come in. Grass Knot. But into the Porygon Z. Okay, that's fine. Um, because now we just get rid of the, the Finny. It cannot. Uh, we'll foul play into the Moon uh, We'll go for that Hyper Beam into the Finny. That should take down the Finny. We'll be able to get uh, some decent damage onto the Moon with foul play. And then Salamence can come in and clean up with hopefully a. Pretty accurate Gigavolt, uh, Giga, Giga Impact, or Hyper, Hyper, Hyper Beam, whatever. We could end with a Hyper Beam, I guess. Hyper Beam, Hyper Beam. Uh, so there we go. We get rid of the Finny with Polygon Z critical hit as well, just to make sure. I'm pretty sure we would have got it regardless of that. Uh, foul play from our Mercro into uh, the Amoongus Dune. Like I say, some decent ish damage. Another critical hit. Nice. That's nice. Another Grass Knot uh, into PZ. Um, there's a taunt, but we can we can taunt it again just to stop it being really disruptive. Uh, Porygon Z obviously has to recharge this turn, but we just want to shut down this Amoongus ability to spawn, especially when the Salamence comes in. Um, but there's the forfeit, and we do pick up a victory to end with today, and it was nice and quick, so the episode's not over long, but... Uh, Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. It's been a really enjoyable episode today. I hope you've continued uh, to enjoy the team so far this week. I'm really loving it, and I don't think... I'm going to say it now. I'm not going to activate any bonus buttons tomorrow. I'm going to go with the team. We're going to hold off till Thursday, so we'll see how we can get on in, uh, in Wednesday's episode, and uh, we'll make a decision Thursday. Maybe we do finish this week up without making any changes, but maybe we'll make some slight ones. But let me know down in the comment section below uh, what your thoughts are on this and uh, I'll see you for the next one so have a great day whatever you're up to for the rest of this day morning afternoon evening whatever time of day it is and I'll see you all for the next one so until then take care and bye bye